Hello and welcome to the Realist News Show, formerly the Real Estate Live News Briefing, the Better Than Success Real Estate Live News Briefing, where we break down all the most important real estate news for the everyday real estate investor so you know how to make the best investing decisions possible and how to make the most money possible in this ever-changing economy. What's up, everyone? It is May 15th. Guess what? It's my birthday. It's my birthday. Birthday. Go birthday. It's your birthday. What's up, everyone? I hope that you all are having an amazing day. I am. Um, my day has been crazy hectic. I like went into this birthday with very low expectations, not even in a bad note. I've just been like, living my life. Like, you know what? I'm happy. I'm not even just living my life, enjoying my life. Just didn't really expect anything. And then like the, the love that you guys have been pouring out has been just insane. Um, so I, I've just been like <laughs> running all over the place and then also preparing for this show, but nevertheless, it is my birthday. And one of the best pieces of birthday or the best Birth, one of the best birthday gifts that I could possibly get is the opportunity to say, I told y'all so. <laughs> I love my I told y'all so. So with that being said, um, I got a bunch of I told y'all so's we're going to talk about today. Right now, um, I know I say this every week, but I really, really mean this. Right now is like the most important time to pay attention in real estate. And so I'm really, really grateful that you guys are here today, paying attention, learning what's going on. I have so much stuff to share with you guys, including before we get into this first story, I usually try to jump right into the first story, but before we get into this first story, I do want to make an official notice. We are changing the name of this show. So y'all want to see some branding changes take place. And the show was the ever so lengthy, lengthy. The title was the Better Than Success Real Estate League Live News Briefing Show or the Better Than Success Real Estate League News Briefing Show Live. OK. And we're changing it. The show is going to be called The Realist News Show, like the realest news. But guess what? Real estate. So let me show you all what I mean. Check out this logo, the realest news show, real estate news. And it's the realest news because I'm not giving you all the mumbo jumbo that they'll be talking about on the news with the economy, everything. This is real stuff. So let's go over what we're going to cover today. Today, we're going to talk about home buying costs could spike 22% if the U.S. defaults on its debt. Don't worry. Don't you dare worry not before you like, oh my God, why am I worrying about? I'm going to show y'all. This is for the regular people. Yeah, the, the cost will spike 22% and that'll scare the regular people out of the market. And I'm we're going to talk about how to take advantage, okay? And how you can turn that frown into a smile for you. The next thing we're going to talk about is why nobody is buying vacation homes anymore. I love this article. I can't wait to get into this. We're also going to talk about U.S. real estate investors are losing money on roughly one in seven homes they sell. The worst since 2016, and they most likely take a hit in these five cities. Can't wait to get into that story as well. And then five most underpriced housing markets in the U.S. Just really quick, let me go back to number three real quick. The U.S., Real estate investors are losing money on one in seven homes. This is my I told you so moment. So we're going to talk about how I told you so, especially for those of you who are, you guys are big supporters of the show. Y'all going to be like, she did tell us so. She did. Okay. Okay. So yes, thank you so much for the birthday love, everyone. Thanks, D-Light. What's up, boo? And peace be free. Thank you so much. And of course, my mama, we got the big giant balloon that you sent. It was, I, that was awesome, mom. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. What's up, Shannon? Happy birthday. Love baby boy. Uh, he is amazing. My son is amazing. I posted a little video of him doing my birthday gifts. Um, and so uh, it was just the sweetest thing ever. Thank you so much, Keith. I really, really, really appreciate you. All right, guys, y'all can keep the, the birthday love rolling in. Let's get into this first story. 
Home buying costs could spike by 22% if the U.S. defaults on its debt. The United States has never defaulted on its debt and it remains an unlikely outcome of the current standoff about raising the debt ceiling. But if it were to happen, which could be as soon as June 1 without intervention, it would further crush an already wounded housing market, according to an analysis by Zillow reported by CNN. In case you weren't aware, the U.S. could default on its obligations as soon as June 1 if Congress doesn't address the debt limit before then. In January, the U.S. hit its $31.4 trillion debt ceiling and since then they've been well aware that they could run out of money sometime this summer if they don't raise it. Nevertheless, if the U.S. were to run out of money, housing costs could spike by 22% with the rate for the 30-year fixed rate mortgages rising above 8%. There would be 700,000 fewer homes sold in the 18 months after July. That's almost 12% of the 6 million sales currently expected during that span, according to analysis. In other words, if you thought this past year of skyrocketing mortgage rates and plunging sales was miserable for the housing market, just wait, there's more. If the United States defaults on its debt, we can do the past 12 months all over again. A senior economist at Zillow said, while we don't expect a debt default to occur, if it did, it would have unprecedented effects on the financial system. This will reduce lending and credit availability throughout the financial system. What that means for the housing market is that the cost of borrowing would rise dramatically and sales would be dropping. In Zillow's analysis, interest rates would spike peaking at 8.4% and unemployment would surge peaking at 8.3% from its current rate of 3.4%. This analysis projects what might happen in an event of a prolonged default and is not in a prediction that a default would occur. Keep that clear. This will be a scenario of a recession being triggered by a huge contraction in federal outlays. Home buyers and sellers have been adjusting to mortgage rates over 6% this spring, but the debt default could potentially raise borrowing costs even higher and send the market into a deep freeze. So, um, yeah, I did want to talk about this. Um, this is the elephant in the room. Um, I don't know if you guys have been paying attention or following, but the U.S. is at its debt ceiling. And we knew all the way back or they knew all the way back in January when we reached this debt ceiling, they're like, listen, something's got to happen because we can run out of money by the summertime. Just FYI, like you, it's hard to, it, I didn't even know how delicate the, the U.S. budget was. It's so delicate that when you get down to the wire like this, they didn't even, they don't know when they're going to actually run out of money. There's so many things that go into it. Like there are a lot of departments. They don't even know what the budget is. They don't even know where the money's coming and where it's going. And then receivables, right? Like income taxes, all that stuff play into it. Like, hey, if we get a whole bunch of receivables, that's literally what they're saying. If we get a bunch of receivables, it could be July. It could be June. We don't know. And so I like this article but it's because it's basically saying like, it's very unlikely that we will have a default. It's very unlikely. Congress will likely raise the debt ceiling. It's very unlikely. But if we do, real estate, buckle up. Buckle up. I don't think it's likely. I mean, we'll literally, we'll know in a couple of weeks. <laughs> like We'll know if they raise the debt ceiling. But um, I like the article, but at the same time, that'll be the least of our concerns. Like a lot of things will just go into a tizzy realistically, probably the biggest thing will be credit markets will freeze up. And so in the in the article, the Zillow report, it's just a it's an estimate. It's an analysis. They just took a bunch of financial data, plugged it into a computer and the computer spit out some results. Hey, you'll sell less 700,000 homes less. You know, unemployment will go to 8%. Uh, interest rates will go to 8.4%. Like, you know, it's just, it's just an educated guess. But I do want you to be paying attention to what's happening with the real, with the debt ceiling. Like it's been all over the news. No, nobody's saying getting all hung up over it because honestly, every couple of years this happens. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ever since we've been running a deficit for the past, I don't know, 15 years, every couple of years, like, oh, the debt ceiling, we got to raise the debt ceiling, we got to raise the debt ceiling, you know. If all else fails, borrow some more money. 
womp womp, that's what this country was based on, right? So um, <laughs> there's that. Um, let me know. Elle said, that is crazy. Yes, all of that is nuts. You just manage your debt properly, you know? That's, that's all that matters. Um, for those of you who are coming in here, it is my birthday. Yes, it is my birthday. Which means that this is the last day that you can take advantage of the birthday sale, okay? I might extend it because a lot of y'all, when I look at the stats for this show, a lot of y'all watch this show on, on the replay. And I want to give my replay people love too. Like, I get it. Sometimes you're not available. I darn sure don't be, darn sure enough, don't almost be available at Monday at six o'clock either. <laughs> you know, I'll be late. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> Only because the, the prep for this show is actually pretty intense. I was just talking to Irish every day, every week. I'm like, yo, I need to, I'm going to do better. I'm going to do this better. I'm going to do this different. And then the, the prep for the show is really, really, really intense. And so I'm thinking about moving to 630, but I want to just make sure that there's no way that I can possibly do it. I want to keep letting y'all down. I'm not really, I really actually am not a late person, to be honest with you. Um, I really hate being late and I hate rushing for things, but the prep for the show, like I, script before when i when monday comes when my nanny gets here i gotta get dressed then i script the show okay then i record it i edit it myself none of this is easy right like all those little chunks i write the whole show right before we come on so it takes me some time and sometimes things don't go right programs don't be working right uh so such as such is life. But thank you so much. Thank you for the birthday wishes. Thank you, Robbie. Thank you for thank you, Carl Ark 212. I really, really, really appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. So, with that being said, for those of you who have been interested in watching us from the sideline, you guys have been dating us, the Better Than Success Real Estate League. This is the perfect time to join. You can get it at 50% off. I do a birthday sale. I usually do a birthday sale every year. This is probably the biggest, deepest discount that I've done on the overall cost. Okay. 50% off. So for just under a thousand dollars, you can literally get the blueprint to get into your first property. For those of you who haven't invested before, get into your first property in 90 days. And within one year, everything is designed so that within one year, you will increase your net worth by at least $100,000. We do a whole bunch of stuff in the Better Than Success Real Estate League to psychologically change you into a real estate investor. We meet up to four times per week. We have the world's very first real estate AI mentor. This is I developed this, for those of you who may remember, I developed this and came out with this. Uh, at the end of the year last, or no, I'm sorry, the summertime, like the fall last year before ChatGPT came out, I came out with the AI mentor because I know a lot of you need to know, if you're trying to answer this burning question, how do I, like, I heard all these people's stories, I hear their interviews and I hear how they got started, but that doesn't apply to me. My situation is very, very unique. I got this going on. I got that going on. How do I specifically me get started investing in real estate? And so the AI mentor uses technology to give you your answer. And then it gives you a four page report, a custom report. It first tells you what your real estate investing archetype is. It gives you a four page report. You're one of 24 different archetypes, by the way, it gives you a 24 page real estate investing report catered to you in your life situation, in your personality type and what you want and who you are. And then it delivers custom content to you based on your archetype and who you are over the course of a year. So you get access to that. You get a, a training once a week, but also you get access to be able to participate in our other trainings, which is five, four, three to four times per week. Group coaching calls, our deal analysis lab and tutoring lunch hour, our mastermind, our. Um, yes, those things, plus our live events. Um, We got two live events coming up, one in L.A. and one in Philly. We're going to talk about that in a minute. I don't want to bog y'all down in between st stories about um, my announcements. So we're going to talk about the events in just a minute. Let's get into this next story. Why nobody is buying vacation homes anymore? 
According to MSN, at the outset of the pandemic in early 2020, demand for second homes soared as those with the means jumped on low mortgage costs and higher saving rates. Like many pandemic era trends, vacation home sales have plummeted significantly, according to a new housing report by Redfin. Per its analysis of optimal blue market data, Redfin found that mortgage rate lock agreements for March dropped 52% from pre-pandemic levels compared to a 13% decrease for primary houses. This is the lowest level for second or vacation home rate locks since February 2016. A mortgage rate lock or rate protection keeps your interest rate from rising between the time you apply for a mortgage and the time you close on your new loan. This allows borrowers to get the best mortgage rate possible while going through the refinancing or purchasing process. Conversely, if you lock your mortgage rate and interest rates fall, you can't take advantage of the lower rate or refinance. Mortgage rate locks for vacation homes peaked in August 2020 when they reached 89% above the average pre-pandemic levels of January and February 2020. March 2023 levels represent a drop of 75% since the high spike. According to USA Today, mortgage rate locks for second homes were down 49% year over year in March and have dipped 71% since January 2022. Mortgage rate locks for primary homes have decreased 29% year over year and 35% since January 2022. Now let's talk about why the demand for vacation homes have dropped. One, while demand for primary houses remains static, vacation homes are not a luxury, not a necessity. Second homes might be an attractive option when economic circumstances are favorable. They may be a riskier purchase when prices, mortgage rates, and inflation are high. Two, prospective second home buyers simply don't have the money for a down payment and monthly payments. Redfin noted that the typical second home was worth $465,000 in 2022 versus $375,000 for a primary home. With housing payments near their all-time high, a lot of people can't afford to buy one home right now, let alone a second. And three, fewer people are inclined to buy a vacation home to rent out as compared to during the pandemic. The pandemic caused the supply for short stay and holiday rentals to soar as wealthier people and investors bought vacation residences and overwhelmed the short-term market. Listen, yo, I love this art. To because it's economics 101 at play. First of all, I told you a little while ago when we first started this, there, there were going to be some things that you're going to have to look out for as we enter into this recession, right? Like I started this show in September. I told y'all that we would be here and I told y'all there would be some things to look out for. And I said, like, don't do anything frivolous and don't expect people to do anything frivolous. Do y'all remember that conversation? Because I was having a conversation about luxury items and I was saying, don't buy luxury items. Like I literally, I told y'all back then, I was like, y'all know I love my shoes, my designer shoes. I have stopped buying everything because this is just not the time for that right now. Time is to store up your cash. I told y'all this back in September. So now here we are. Wealthy people who tend to buy vacation homes and second homes, they're not doing them. Now, how does this play? How does this affect you? A lot of you investors, y'all have goals right now. I know this because I talk to a lot of BTS members. You have goals. You're like, okay, I want to invest here. I want to invest there. But you have a goal of, I want to invest in one of these luxury markets, one of these secondary markets. Like I had a conversation with a good friend of mine over the weekend and she's like, yeah, um, I think I'm going to start investing by the shore in Jersey. And so I'm not saying don't do it. I'm not saying if you get a fire deal, don't strike that match. But what I am saying is that's not something I'm looking to do right now. Invest in secondary home or invest in just in that market, just in general, because things is about, and it's about to tighten up as they already are tightening up. And the last thing you want to do is put all your eggs in a basket in something that's luxury, right? Second home, people don't need second homes, right? We're going to see in a minute that a good reason why home prices surge is because people were home. Their homes were more valuable to them. Now people are out and about. They don't need to be home. They darn sure don't need to be in a second home. And so I want you to think about that. If you want to invest in vacation rental market, I have some people that want to do that. 
literally speaking to someone in particular in my mind, just make sure you diversify your investment and your investment strategies, right? This might not be the time to do it. People aren't investing in vacation homes right now. It is not a market for it. Also, too, the other thing that I felt like was very economics one-on-one about all this, when COVID happened and race, rates were low and access to capital was easy and people were buying homes left and right, and there was a lot of information on the market about like people doing these long-term stays at these vacation spots because they can work from home. And so wealthy people was buying up vacation homes. They sent the market up through the roof and they oversaturated the market. And so like, I don't know if y'all remember during pandemic, if you decided to travel, if you try to get an Airbnb, a nice luxury Airbnb in certain areas, you just couldn't get it. The prices were crazy. And now it's not like that anymore because people just, it's just not a thing for them. So I'm not saying you can never fulfill your dream of investing in a luxury rental. This just might not be the season for it. This is not something that I would do as a season for it. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? Do y'all have any questions for me? This is the time to ask your questions. Please put your questions in the chat. It's my birthday. I'm in a good mood. (laughs) It's my birthday. (laughs) I'm in a great mood. I'm here to answer all of your questions. Okay. And my mama said, be sure to tap the thumbs up button and show YouTube how much you love the real, the realest news show. That's our new show. That's the name of the show. It's called the realest news show. Yes. Please give us a thumbs up too. And again, I want to say Irish forgot to post the link on the screen. Today is the last day. If you want to join the Better Than Success Real Estate League for 50% off of the annual option, just select the annual option, put the code Happy B Day in the chat. Thank you, sweet tweet. Put the code Happy B Day in the chat. I mean, not in the chat, in the um in the discount section at checkout. And you can get 50% off and for under a thousand dollars for a whole year, you will get access to our membership club in 90 days. It's designed so that in 90 days you can be in your first property. And within a year, you will increase your net worth by at least a hundred thousand dollars. So for a thousand dollars, you can increase your net worth by a hundred thousand dollars. That's not even counting your cash flow. Okay. All right. All right. Let's get into my next announcement that I wanted to share with you all today. Oh, I just want to go over our core values. Don't you guys ever, ever, ever forget our core values better than success real estate league. We're not going to go through all the details in our core values because we do that at our members only meetings, but don't forget courage, integrity, stewardship, strategy, legacy, and love begin with the league adventure and gratitude are our eight core values. Let me know. Thank you, Duval. It's happy B day up in this zone. Um, let me know for those of you who are not members. I'm not talking about members. If you are not members, if any of these core values resonates with you, this is how I tell my members. I say, listen, when we home, when we are in our meetings, we home. But when I send you all outside that house, you better remember who you are. I need people to say that's a BTS member because I know that they're doing really good business. Let me know which one of these core values resonates with you right now. Put it in the chat, tap in, let me know. Courage, integrity, stewardship, strategy, legacy, and love begin with the league, adventure, gratitude. Each of these has a saying that we that we recite at our meetings behind them. I'm not going to take about three, four minutes to do it. I ain't going to go through it, but um, you can get access to that. Actually, if you are super curious, I got something for y'all at the end. Um, we got a lot of events. Let me get into my next story before we get into these events. How about that? All right. U.S. real estate investors are losing money on roughly one in seven homes they sell among the worst since 2016. And they are most likely to take a hit in these five cities. According to finance.yahoo.com, the golden days of real estate investors buying and flipping homes for a quick profit appear to have come to a halt. In select U.S. cities, investors have been forced to sell homes at a loss as sky-high house prices 
and elevated mortgage rates diminish home buyer demand. Investors lost money on roughly one in every seven or 13.5% homes they sold in March, according to a new report by Redfin. In comparison, only 4.8% of overall U.S. homes that sold in March sold at a loss. That followed a dire month in February when real estate investors lost money on 14.5% of homes sold, the highest rate since 2016 and a long stretch from the record monthly low of 2.8 percent in may of 2022. this dispels the myth that buying and selling real estate is an almost guaranteed money maker but the stats are quite strongly in favor of the investors real estate investors are most likely to lose money in the markets that saw the largest surges in house prices during the pandemic according to redfin the report analyzed data from 40 of the most populous cities in the metropolitan areas in March, the hardest hit market was Phoenix, Arizona, where 30.7% of homes sold by investors lost money. Phoenix was followed by Las Vegas, Nevada, 28%, Jacksonville, Florida, 20.9%, Sacramento, California, 20.2%, and Charlotte, North Carolina, 17.4%. You might wonder why investors don't just wait to sell until the housing market bounces back. Many long-term investors who rent their properties out are doing just that. But many flippers, especially those that brought recently, can't afford to. Home flippers, which Redfin defines as investors that buy and resell homes within nine months, sold roughly one in five homes at a loss in March, according to Redfin. Holding on to homes that aren't producing income can be expensive because the owner is on the hook for property taxes along with operating costs and monthly mortgage payments in some cases. Many short-term investors are also opting to sell because they know prices may have more room to fall and want to cut their losses. While the number of investor-owned homes selling at a loss currently is quite high, it's important to remember that many housing investors, whether large companies or small mom-and-pop investors, continue to make gains from buying and selling homes, even in cooling housing markets. In March, the typical investor sold a home for 45.9% or $145,000, more than the price they paid, according to Redfin. But those gains have shrunk from 55.3% or $173,000 a year earlier, and at the peak of the pandemic of 67.9% or 199,000 in June 2022. Flipping might be off the table, but there are a number of strategies to engage when investing in real estate. And remember, there's always money in real estate. Okay, so that article was juicy. I can't wait to dig in. Before we do, Dan, thank you so much for the super sticker. Thank you, Dan, yo. I appreciate you so much. And Sweet Tweet said their favorite core values were two and eight, integrity, amen, and eight is gratitude. Those are two really, really, really good ones. Any uh, Anyone else want to share what their core values, their favorite of the BTS core values is? Um, just type it in the chat. Okay, so that article was massively juicy. Just so juicy with so many things. I need to pull it up and have it in front of me. All right, real estate investors are losing money on roughly one in seven homes they sell among the worst since 2016. They're most likely to take a hit in these five cities. Let me be very, very clear, right? A lot of times these articles are written by reporters who are not investors. So they don't know how to stress certain ling lingo, okay? They need to stress flippers, real estate investors that are flippers. Now, here is another, this is, I told you, one of my best birthday gifts is I told you so's. Y'all do remember that I told y'all, Dan, I know for a fact that you were there in September when we started doing this show. And shortly after we were dealing with inflation, we started dealing with inflation and the Fed started raising rates. And I was like, listen, let me tell y'all where this is going to go. Flippers, this is not good for y'all. This is not the time to flip. Do y'all remember when I said that? Please tell me yes in the chat. Let me know. Let me know I'm not crazy because I could pull the tapes. It's all recorded. I said, this is not the time to flip. Burr investors, and I specifically said burr investors, buy and hold investors, get busy. Is your is your net worth going to go down just a little bit? Yes, but that's cool. That's cool. We in this for the long haul. When the market dips, that's a buying opportunity, but we're not going to talk about that right now. We just want to bask in this. Nicole, I told you so. I'm not saying nothing wrong with flipping, but what I am saying is this is just not the moment to do flipping right now. 
It's just not, okay? They said that investors lost money on one in seven homes that they sold in March. So these are flippers, again, flippers, right? According to only 4.8% of overall homes. So these are people who are resident, like residential owners. So out of all overall homes that sold in March, only 4.8% 4 of them lost money. But investors lost of that portion, <laughs> investors lost 13.5%, okay? Um, February was worse. Investors lost 14.5%. That was the highest since 2016. The 2016 is a random date. <laughs> like, I mean, they lost money in 2016, but like that wasn't like, you know, right after the housing crash or anything like that, but whatever. Um, and then May 2022. Now, this is why I was waiting to get here. May 2022, the low was only 2.8% of flippers lost money in May of 2022, last year. Now, here's the thing, right? There are opportune, there are times in real estate when it's so prosperous that even the dumb babies make money. And I don't mean that in a disrespectful way, right? And so you gotta you gotta know when those times are. 2022, everybody's making money hand over fist. It was easy to get in. Barrier to entry was low. Credit was was super easy. People was selling homes. People was buying homes. It was popping out here. Okay. You had to really be being blind to not make money on a flip at that time. Okay. So now here we are. You can still make money. One out of seven. That's still good odds against you. That means the other 86% you're going to make money if you're going to do flips. I'm just still I don't I don't I'm not comfortable with doing flips right now, but there are some of you that are like, "Yo, I just this is what I want to do." I'm cool. Actually, that's not true. I would do a flip out here if the numbers made sense. I would do a flip out here in California. Actually, I think I I kind of sort of kind of want to do it. But I'm just not this is not something that I wake up and be like, "Oh, I got to do a flip." Okay. The next thing is I wanted to go over in this article is the cities that were hit the hardest. Phoenix, Arizona, 30% of flippers lost their money. Las Vegas. Remember, I told you all the cities that get, got hit was Phoenix, Las Vegas, um, Austin. But Austin's not on here. Jacksonville, Florida. We knew Florida was going to be in there. Sacramento, California. Absolutely. And Charlotte, North Carolina. That kind of um, surprises me, but it doesn't. Because that was one of the hot markets during the pandemic, right? So if you are if you are not paying attention to the news, this is why I say this right now is the most critical time to pay attention to the news if you're investing in real estate. If you're not paying attention to the news and you're just looking at what trends have been doing over the past five, six years, and then especially during the pandemic, what they have been doing in the previous year, you decide you want to do a flip and you're like, Charlotte is popping. Oh my God, it's, oh my goodness, it's popping. Meanwhile, on this show, we've been like, yo, inflation's high. The Fed's going to raise rates. They got to slow this down. <laughs> this is crazy. It's going to come. It's going to come. It's going to come. And then you're not paying attention and then you lose money. This is just people that literally, that was willfully ignorant. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with them, but they were just willfully ignorant. They didn't want to pay attention to the news. Especially right now. Okay. Thanks, Koi. Thank you. Today's my birthday also, by the way. Thank you. Sam. Happy. Oh, you did say happy birthday too. Thank you so much. Thank you for the happy Mother's Day wishes. I appreciate it. My mom said, I don't know if y'all can see if y'all on YouTube. If you look down below, we got a swag store. I gotta, uh, I gotta, I can't wait until my shipment comes in. I gotta do a little photo shoot. We got some bomb swag. It's down below. Cop, pick your poison. Okay. Notebooks, t shirts, coffee mugs. Oh, I can't wait till my stuff comes in. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. Let me know if you're checking it out. All right. Let me get to 
I do have some announcements. Okay, we got some important announcements. The blessed, I'm not going, I'm just going to go through this. I'm not going to try to sell y'all on this because what I really want y'all to, what I want to sell y'all on is joining Better Than Success. Um, is joining the Better Than Success Real Estate League because today, last day, or I might extend it. I, pro I probably will. For all you people who watch this show on recording, to go to joinbts.com. You get 50% off of the annual membership. Uh, I was just posted it right there on the screen. All right. So here are the events that we got coming up. Blessed Investor Challenge, June 14th through the 16th at 6 p.m. You can RSVP there. This is the course where I'm going to teach you. It's a challenge where I'm going to teach you the biblical principles to help you unlock some of those barriers you have in your mind about investing. Some of you have been studying, 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 and y'all like, I'm a little bit scared to pull the trigger. Why haven't I pulled the trigger? What is what is what is spiritually holding me up? We're going to go through all that. We're going to release a whole bunch of spiritual blocks. Okay. Then the off market property exchange. Think real estate. Think stock market, but for off market properties in Philly. This is at our headquarters, May twentieth. This is the event that they always have a blast at. So this is this Saturday coming up. Go to the link right there. Then our members only events, group coaching and accountability call. We got one today, the 26th, 7 p.m. Dale Analysis Lab and Tutoring. Don't forget every Tuesday, our mastermind is every Wednesday, our new members class and real estate CEO school. Shout out to everybody who signed up for real estate CEO school. I cannot wait. I'm so excited. It's starting on Thursday. Okay. The next thing, special events. All right. So this is the special part. I am going to be doing an event and here in LA, I, I wish I didn't want you to put that date just yet because I have not nailed it down, but it's most likely going to happen. I just haven't, um, I just haven't confirmed with the people, but it's most likely going to happen. How to find your first real estate deal for $0 of your own money. Um, that is going to be here in LA at the gathering spot. 5211 West Adams Boulevard here at 6 p.m. I cannot wait. Let me know if you're in LA and you're trying to get it popping. We're going to start having events out here every two weeks, maybe once a month. I'm really excited about that. And then in Philly, I'm going to be teaching a class, how to, how to hire and manage your real estate virtual assistant. This is a class that a lot of you, this is a question that a lot of you have because I always tell y'all like, listen, y'all know I'm a GC, y'all know I'm buy my properties in cities that I don't live in. And the key to me running my life is having a virtual assistant. So your question is like, where do you hire a virtual assistant? A lot of you don't know how to manage virtual assistants. I'm going to be teaching these classes in person. Both of these classes are free for members and $69 for non-members. Okay. Yes. Go to better than success.com forward slash your VA. Actually, the Philly, the LA event is going to be free, just free. There's no cost because I got to build y'all up out here. But in Philly, I'm sorry. Most of our members are in Philly and that's, you know, you're going to have to pay $69. But if you're a member, you can come up both of those events for free. If you come into LA or if you know somebody in LA, let me know. I'm going to have a flyer for y'all. Um, so don't kill yourself about that. Also, don't forget your merch is down below. And let's get into this next story. I feel like I've been talking too long. The most underpriced housing markets in the U.S. According to InsiderMonkey.com, apart from the stock market, the housing market is one of the most crucially watched sectors in the American economy. Housing prices, not only in America, but all over the world, are a key barometer of economic health. This is due to the fact that higher prices indicate that the public is relatively prosperous as it can afford to funnel out more funds for large purchases. Since a variety of industries such as cement, lumber, wiring, appliances, and more are connected to the housing industry, higher spending by the construction companies also ends up stimulating these sectors as well. At the same time, recent developments in the U.S. and the global economy have also put the housing market under strain. Starting with the COVID pandemic, even though the pandemic induced a widespread economic slowdown, the housing market presented an interesting case study. Researchers from the University of Chicago showed that lockdowns appear to have a direct impact on housing prices. They showed that in the aftermath of the pandemic, housing prices grew the fastest in regions where people spent more time indoors. The researchers also break down the growth in housing prices and segment it based on the reasons for this growth. 
This reveals that half of the growth in the housing prices in 2020 was due to lockdowns at stay at home mandates with lower mortgages due to historically low interest rates fueling a smaller portion of this. Additionally, another crucial trend that affected the housing market due to the pandemic is working from home. While lockdowns generated significant employment, at the same time they also pushed large chunks of working people towards working remotely. According to the Census Bureau, this ended up stimulating the demand for housing in remote areas as people that were no longer restricted geographically through their workplaces moved to more affordable areas to improve their standard of living. Using the data from the Zillow Home Value Index, the Bureau outlines that the home sales dropped by 20% in 2020 and at the same time led to almost 2 million renters moving to a new location with cheaper rent. The net effect of this resulted in more people buying a home than renting it and caused a sharp divergence between the buying and renting indexes just as the pandemic hit. With these details in mind, let's take a look at some of the most underpriced housing markets in America right now. Number 20, South Dakota, 19, Pennsylvania, 18, Illinois, 17, Tennessee, 16, Wisconsin, 15, South Carolina, 14, Michigan, 13, Nebraska, 12, Missouri, 11, Louisiana, 10, Indiana, 9, Ohio, 8, Kansas, 7, Kentucky, 6, Alabama, 5, Iowa, Oklahoma, number 4, Arkansas, number 3, Mississippi, number 2, and number 1, West Virginia. So um, that article was really, really interesting to me. First of all, thank you so much, Dan. I appreciate you. Dan be out here slanging it. Thank you so much, Dan. If you are, this is my mic, if y'all wondering what's, what's this point up like that. If y'all are uh, trying to give me any birthday gifts, y'all can join BTS. Y'all can give a, a super sticker. Um, thank you, Tara. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the birthday gift. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. So let's get into this article. Um, I didn't really think about this, right? Like we just know that the housing market surged during the pandemic, but you think about the psychology behind why, right? People value their homes more because they had to stay in home indoors. So at the end of the day, the reason why we have inflation and higher interest rates is because people valued staying at home more. So we had this huge appreciation in home values because people valued staying home and coupled with the fact that interest rates were really, really low. So people valued their homes more because they had to stay indoors. People didn't know how long we we're going to be indoors. Shoot, if I'm going to be indoors, I want to be in a nice place. I'm going to be honest with you. I moved out here in California during the pandemic and I was like, I even posted this online. Hey, if I'm going to be inside, like, I want to be someplace that's look, give, give me resort vibes. Like, If I can't go to a resort, I need to be bring the resort to my house. Okay. <laughs> And this is what people's, their sentiment was. So this is why right now we have an inflation problem because people saw more value in being at home. I wonder if when the Fed, when the government pumped all that money into the economy, I wonder if this is what they were thinking was going to happen. I wonder if they factored this in. Like, hey, people... People value being in homes. They want to surround themselves with a comfortable place to live and interest. I wonder if they knew that. This is just like massively fascinating to me. Um, with that being said, the underpriced homes, right? And so what they did, how they valued these underpriced um, markets is they went state by state. I wish they would have went metropolitan area by metropolitan area versus state by state. I pulled them up so that I'm not just um, so you guys can have some visuals. I normally like to put stuff like that on the screen on this on the show, but I told you I was running a little bit. Uh, I, the show was more overwhelming to me than I thought it would be today, and I didn't have enough time to do it. All right, so here are the cities. I mean the states: twenty South Dakota, Pennsylvania.
Can you all hear me now? Can you all hear me now? Let me know in the chat. Hold on one second. Listen, can you hear me now? Let me know if y'all can hear on this mic. You had to have backups for the backup, okay? I charge my mic up. <laughs> That's part of my checklist before going on this show. <laughs> you got to have backups for the backup. I was straight talking. What was the last thing y'all heard me say? Backup for the backup for the backup. I don't know what happened to that mic. I want to cuss somebody out right now. We're going to call Rude and be like, yo, I did go old school. Oh, come on now. What's the last thing y'all heard me say? Because I was talking. I was flowing. I was out here flowing in these streets. I was out here flowing. I was reading the list. That was the last thing y'all heard me say. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Stopped as soon as you started sharing your screen. Okay. All right, so let's let me give you a visual on the. I'm gonna blow it up because it looks like it's kind of small anyway. I was going ham. All right, so let's go through these real quickly again. Um, South Dakota, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, Wisconsin, South Carolina, Michigan, Nebraska, Missouri, Louisiana, Indiana, Ohio, Kansas, Kentucky. Alabama, Iowa, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Mississippi, West Virginia. So for those of you who, I was like really in a flow, y'all. <laughs> the way that they valuing undervalued is they're basically saying like, hey, um, the median home price in the US overall is like 400,000. Some of these places, the median home price is 200,000. And so they're saying like, hey, there's an opportunity, there's a potential opportunity here. Am I saying invest in some of these more boring states? No, you need to do some research. Some of these places, and it depends on the city, I really wish they would have did metropolitan areas versus states, right? But like some of these places are, some of these cities, local areas within some of these states are dead. Like the reason why the value is low is because no one's there, right? Like there's no opportunities there. There's no jobs there. So you need to do some research, but I will tell you what states are not on here, the hot and popping states like California, Florida, Texas, um, New York, not on here, the hot and popping states. They may be overvalued, which we, most of us know, but I think that as investors, right? So y'all come to this show because you're like, how can I take advantage of what's West right now? What you need to do, especially for those of you who have the courage to invest in cities that you don't live in, you need to be looking in some of these more boring cities and looking for metropolitan, I mean, in some of these more boring states, looking for metropolitan areas where there's opportunity. Hey, there are jobs. Hey, the median income outpaces the average rent where um, there is growth. Look for some of these off cities and invest there versus trying to find the hot markets because there that's where you're going to get the most bang for your buck right it's undervalued that means no one sees the value and the value is there okay so i want you to think about that and really seriously consider it especially some of you who have large portfolios in one city you really, really, really right, especially right now, should be thinking about how can I diversify this thing? Because what you don't want to happen, especially if you are in one city, we see how specific cities get hit. 
we see how specific metropolitan areas get hit. And that's my biggest thing. Like as I built my portfolio in Philly, like I love Philly. I'm not selling any of my properties, but I need to diversify, right? And what does diversification do? Diversification allows you to increase your return by mitigating some of your risk. And so if something were to happen to the Philadelphia metropolitan area as an economy as a whole, pet dangles, <laughs> dangling on the boss leg anyway in Philadelphia, I don't want my whole entire retirement to get hit. Okay. So think about this, but like I said, am I saying, Hey, go to these States? No, you got to do some research. Some of these States is just need to stay where they at. <laughs> do I know which ones? No, I did look at You guys can catch the links below. If you want to go and see in depth a little bit more about what the article says about these markets, but some of these markets, they're very unpopulated. <laughs> they're very unpopular. They don't have a lot of people there. Do I want to invest in a place that there's not a lot of people there? Not me. I need people. <laughs> you out, somebody else in. <laughs> okay. All right. Don't forget your merch is down below. Let me know if y'all got questions in the chat. This, that's what I'm here for, right? Like, I'm going to sit here and entertain y'all and tell y'all jokes and let my mic cut out and see how I bounce back real quick. Like, y'all can be entertained all y'all want, but I'm here to answer your questions. For those of you members who missed it, um, our last mastermind, we had Nasir Smith. He uh, he talked about, you guys can watch the recording. He talked about managing debt, helps you to analyze cash flow and allocate funds for real estate investment. Managing, balancing current debt with real estate growth is crucial for effective portfolio management. We talked about that, right? Like it's, there is a point, there is a point in time as an investor that you're going to start have to managing this thing. Like, yeah, you get your first and your second property and then you're going to have to start looking at it like a real portfolio, running your portfolio like a portfolio manager would and start assessing risk and managing it like a big boy and a big girl. Okay. Managing risk is also vital. <laughs> Life and health insurance protect against potential risk. Lack of proper coverage can cause financial strain leading to credit card debt. Protecting assets and leaving a legacy are crucial and building generational wealth is it, more than crucial. It's everything. You can buy all these properties if you don't protect your assets because you're like, here, I'm here for generational wealth. And then you do something like you buy four properties and then you leave the properties to your four kids each in the will. And some of y'all think this is a good idea, but it's a God awful idea. First of all, the estate tax that they're going to have to, the inheritance tax that they're going to have to pay if you leave it in the will rather than figuring out how to circumvent that, then you're breaking up the wealth. Don't break up the wealth. Keep the wealth together. If you don't know what I mean, go and check out the book. Um, what would the Rockefellers do? Keep the money together. If y'all need me to clarify on that, I can give you all a real quick lesson on that. Keep, if y'all know, what, if y'all understand what keep the money together is, let me know in the chat. Um, Tax plan is critical for rental property businesses. Regular check-ins with an accountant quarterly or twice a year are recommended, especially with significant property accumulation. Let me know if y'all need a clarification on that as well. Someone said they don't see the, the link for the merch. It should be down just below this video if you're watching on YouTube. Like you should see actually little icons for clothing. Just right beneath the video. Okay. All right. So sweet, sweet. Have you come across any update signs? Another market crash is coming. I don't know if it's going to be a crash. I think we will. I genuinely, genuinely think we will have a soft landing. Let me answer this question again, because this might be a really good clip that I could post on <laughs> Instagram. I don't want to hold the mic away from my face. All right. So the question is, have you come across any update signs that another market crash is coming? Yes. <laughs> 
I don't think it's going to be a crash. I do believe that we're going to have a soft landing, but I think, I think it's going to be so gradual that we will look at the bottom of this thing and look and compare it to its height, like how we did today when we looked at how much money flippers were making. And we're going to be like, wow, this was gradual. We didn't feel any shock. This was really gradual, but hey, how much money we were making for today versus yesterday is quite different. And I, you know, I shouldn't say how much money we were making. The strategies we were doing today versus yesterday is quite different. You, it's up to you to stay in the know, to know the strategies. Right now, I already told you, and I, I'm still standing by the burr strategy. Now, does this mean that you can burr and pull every single dime back out of your property? Actually, I got an appraisal waiting for me in my inbox right now. And I read the first line of the email. The appraisal came back a little lower than expected. Okay. Does it mean that I'm going to leave a little bit of money in my properties? Yes. Do I like that? No. Am I, is it still better than having a job for me? Yes. Okay. All right. Sweet tweet said clarification about keeping the money together. Um, let me give you an example. So in the book, I highly recommend it. Um, mom, you got a link to get my Amazon store link and post the book, um, post the book link so I can get my little pennies from Amazon <laughs> affiliate program. Um, in the book, what would the Rockefellers do? It's a very, it's a thin book. So it's a really quick read, but they talk about how there are a couple of rules that they do to make sure that their money lasts for generations, like 150 people eat off this trust. Okay. And one of the rules is keep the money together. When you start divvying out the money, the money doesn't have as much power. And so the writer gives an example. I wish I can remember the exact numbers, but the writer gives an example. Let's say you have two people who have a family, um, a mother and a father, they have a family. They have four, they have a hundred million dollars and then they have four children. And in one scenario, they leave each of the four children, um, they leave each of the four children $25 million each. If those children have four children, no children have four children. By the time you get to the great grand generation and they just leave this money, the great grand generation is literally only going to have about $80,000, something like that. No, maybe it was like, it was, it was six figures, but it was low six figures. I think it's like $200,000, something like that each per person. But if you keep the money together and allow the money to grow, each person out of everybody that's on that entire family tree, right? Like four people have four kids each. Four of those kids have four kids each. If all those people, I did the math, all those people, you keep the money together and allow the money to grow while it's together. And those people live off the interest alone. Each one of those people can get like 80 grand a year by keeping the money together. OK, and so separating your money. You're not really I mean, you may be helping them, but like that's not how you establish generational wealth. That's the easiest way to make it dwindle. Say, hey, you get this and you get a little bit of that and you get a little bit of this and you get a bit a little bit of that. Nah, all this is going in the trust. You're a beneficiary. This is what you this is. You, you get a little stipend. You get this, you get that. And you got to add to the trust. I did a post on Instagram outlining how I set my trust up so that this is, is designed to establish generational wealth. And it's also designed specifically not to allow my heirs, my son, specific, currently my son and my parents, if something were to happen to me while I'm young, nobody can squander my wealth. And you, if you want, you can go and take a look at it, see how I did it. You can totally take a, you can totally copy. I don't care. I made it up. I made, I made my whole strategy up after doing a bunch of research. I made my trust strategy up and you can go and check it out. Maybe I'll make a YouTube video about it. I don't know. I'll figure it out. Actually, I put it, I think I put it short. I did a short on this page as well for that strategy. 
keeping it together, such as stocks, bonds, start, you keep it together. You don't, when something happens to you, you keep all the assets together in a trust versus giving it to each individual person. And then they can be beneficiaries of the trust. But everything, all at stocks, bonds, everything that you're goes into your net worth. You keep it together versus separating it out. Put money together is more powerful than it is when you divvy it out. You know, like just think like this. If everybody that's on this live right now, if we all pulled our money together and had one big pot, let's say just for argument's sake, let's say it totaled a hundred million dollars. Do you know how many rooms we can get to get into collectively by having one account with a hundred million dollars in it versus oh you got five hundred thousand, oh you got fifty thousand, oh you got ten thousand, oh you got you know. There is no like, oh, everybody gets treated like a regular person. I could do a video about that. Um, let me know, guys, what do you think of my the new show title? Um, why am I drawing a blank? Oh, here it is, the stream. Okay. I couldn't figure out what, what the slide was. Do y'all like my the new show title, The Realest New Show? The Realest New Show, where we giving you real Neil news, the real deal. Let me know if y'all like my title. And don't forget, um, Sweet Tweet, are you joining Better Than Success Real Estate League? Um, today is the last day-ish. <laughs> I have to decide. I will decide what I'm going to do. Today is the last day-ish to join for 50% off. Oh, oh, really quickly before I do that pitch, my mom said all the books. Oh, wait, hold on, Irish. Hold on. All the books are here on Amazon. That's our Amazon store. The link is in the chat. It'll be in the description for this as well. Mom, make sure you put the description in this video, please. And then um, Irish, go ahead and post the um, join BTS link, please. For those of you who are. There you go. If you guys want to take advantage of join our club, if y'all are trying to meet up with me in person on June 6th in Philly or on May 24th in Los Angeles, it's free for you because you are a member. You are my family. Join at happy B, uh, join BTS.com and then put happy B day in at checkout and you will be a part of the family. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. All right, let me go enjoy my birthday. I got a little bit of work to do. And then I'm going to dinner with my family. And it's, apparently there's supposed to be some surprise there. I don't know what kind of surprise. I have really, whatever the surprise would be. Even if it's something small, I know it's probably gonna be something small. I don't know. I'm, I don't know. I have, my expectations are, I just love my family. I'm just excited to be with them. I have, I have they will, it will be a surprise. <laughs> Because I literally do not know what it possibly is. Oh, and by the way, mom, Irish bought me to, uh, bought me a new pot and pan set. <laughs> Not Irish, sorry. <laughs> Faye bought me a new pot and pan set. I'm sorry. Now I'm when I'm on live, I'm so used to saying Irish. Faye, my co-parent, my nanny. <laughs> she bought me a pot and pan set. So we don't got to worry about that. But I got some other things that we can we can discuss when you get here. All right, everyone. I love y'all so 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 much. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us and thank you for all the birthday love. And um, make sure you sign up for Better Than Success before this discount goes away. Let's get free, everyone.